Woods. Hey, welcome to the show. This is Lil Panda. I had a great conversation with Yi Tong yesterday. We talked about nouns agora. We talked about building in nouns. Uh, we talked about uh, liquid delegation, which is a governance issue that he is working on at Nouns Agora. He also helped me draft a delegate statement, Agora profile for sort of a pseudonymous voter uh, persona that I'm working on. Nounsworth Carnegie. Had a great conversation with Yi Tong. Here it is. That's right, Yi Tong. It's very funny to me that uh, Will Price was the, in the intro. Yeah, it's fried dates. Um, I don't know. This is like a very sort of like a like a like a canned food from my child. It's one of my favorite colors. I don't know. I like yellow and green. There are really there are really f very few yellows that are usable in like a lot of contexts, right? It's kind of like if you try to pick a yellow color and it's like a, a you need a little bit more red in there. I think um, too much red, too much red. Yeah, yeah. this is kind of where it's at. Like uh, like and then you like dial up the luminosity a little bit more. Just make it slightly more light. Um, that is, so you're a little muddy now. It's like it's like too dark, right? So it's like a, like a yellow is like a it's yellow is like a pretty tough color. Like um, there aren't that many shades of it that are sort of like broadly applicable, and a lot of them are sort of like very hyper specific. Um, like it's like blue. There are many many shades of blue that are very popular and common. Yellow is just there's not that many. We ourselves are sort of a collective of people trying to do things on the internet at, at scale and. Uh, we're just going around and seeing who else was doing really interesting stuff uh, like this on the internet. And then it was, uh, everybody was like, yo, like now you got to check out now. Got connected to Jacob. He was like, dude, you have to put up a pro proposal for nouns. Like, like just do something. Like you'll get it when you do something. And so we like put up this proposal to like do like a, like a treasure hunt in then New York where we had to put up sort of, we, we got 10 artists that we really respected to do different riffs on nouns. Um, so that in their own style, so that this was sort of like a pretty interesting project. Let's do ten different pieces. Let's print them in giant like we paste posters and put them all over New York. And if you find one, you can mint one. Um, so they were all different riffs on the noggles, and pretty pretty out there. Like I I really liked how how these were sort of not the traditional ways that people have riffed on nouns. They're kind of a little bit more like um like a little avant garde, I would say. So that was a lot of fun. That was my, our first sort of like, let's just do something. We're not sure what, but let's just do something with nouns. What is a vector? A vector is a direction and a magnitude. Why name it vector? Look, the truth is that like John just already had the domain. <laughs> that was it, right? It was like, uh, we like I, we took like a day and a half to launch the whole thing. Uh, and it was like, I did the website. John did the blog post. He had the domain and we were kind of just like, fuck it. Like, that's the easiest way to do this. And so that, and then we became vector. You know, we really didn't think more than like a couple of hours on the, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole, the whole name thing because we didn't, we really didn't know whether it was going to go anywhere. And so, you know, sort of like out there is is uh, getting it out there was the most important thing. And then it kind of just stuck. Um, and you know, you know, like uh, let's uh, do the transition over to Agora. Then one of the first things I noticed was you were prop one. Was that because you were the first submitted or is it because you got the most votes? Do you remember? No, we were the first submitted. I have noticed that a lot of prop house entries that submit early do better. I don't know if that's anecdotal or not, but. No, I think that's, I think that's probably true, right? It's kind of, you're just like there. You're, you're, you're just hanging out. Like a lot of people wait for the last minute to submit because they want to more, have more time. But then it's like, if you la wait for the last minute, then everybody's coming in in the last minute. So it's like, it's just like an attention thing, right? It's like, if, um, it's like, a, like if you're one of the 10 people who submit at the last minute, then you're sharing the attention, a fixed amount of attention with 10 other people. And only for like a few, you know, it, only for like a few, like uh, uh, for less time. Whereas if you're first, then you're, you're solo, you know, like, a, like you're not splitting the attention to anybody else and you have the attention for longer. I think it's just like a. Everything is about attention on the internet. So, like, uh, I think it's just like just thinking through like the attention logic here it makes sense. That like, um, if you're first, it probably helps a little bit. I just would have been the mind space of just uh, I'll do the most interesting thing that I can for as long as I can. Um, and uh, was sort of like on, on this like uh, I had this idea that like I would never have a job again and would just do stuff that to me felt interesting with the people that I liked, and. Uh, 
you know, like one of my my, my core interests uh, over over a long period of time now has been sort of like um like funding and like a, like sustainable funding for people doing things on the internet. I was really really into Wikipedia like uh, since I was a kid. I just thought it was such a magical thing to, to have people like collectively curating knowledge on the internet and sort of really like building this amazing thing together. It's so I have been like an early small donor. I was just always really interested in space and it's kind of how I got into crypto. And so um, after I left that was, uh, Coinbase, I was like, okay, actually now I think we have most of the tooling that we need to sort of start doing something in this space and sort of have been hunting for like, just like things to do, honestly, um, in this area. And so Vector was one of them. Uh, like my, like uh, working with nouns is like, uh, was, was sort of like one step forward in this direction. It's like, there must be something here sort of in this like realm of like, creating new structures for people to come together and collaborate and uh, towards a shared goal. Um, so anything in this space, like I was in the mindset of, I'm gonna just, it's worth trying. And then let's see, like um, I, I had like a wide variety of like skills in like a bunch of, like I'm not, I'm like a very much of like a generalist. So like I could build, like I, I could be building community, building software. Like my heart really is in building software, but like was like pretty open to doing anything as long as it was interesting and I learned and it was sort of within this realm. Yeah, so that's kind of how we fell into this first vector thing. And honestly, also wanted to shout out Noun40. Uh, this is sort of like when we, like um, I realized that Noun40 like, worked out at the same WeWork that I did. And I was like, oh shit, like we should just chat. And then Noun40 was actually the one who seeded this idea um, in me. It was like, was like, he was like, yo, I've been looking for this for a long time. Like I would love to see a delegate history. I would love for a place to, like for delegates or like, you know, a first class citizen, what would that look like? And like that a place where sort of like um we could all see like a C sort of You've got such a clear kind of TLDR. Agora lets anyone pitch themselves as a delegate by creating a rich media delegate profile. That's what Agora does. I don't take too much credit for that one because this is just like uh prop house forces you to have a very clear TLDR. I don't know if they still do, but uh when we were submitting, there was like a text limit. Uh, so there was like a character limit. And so uh, we had to get really concise about that. So good job. Good job, CDT and Seneca, whoever whoever figured out the character limit on that one. What did it feel like to win this? I mean, were you pretty confident going in that you'd win? What was that was that like with this prop house victory? Well, you, you never really know, right? So I'm never confident in any, in, that, in any sort of like a vote or on-chain kind of thing. It's it's not done until it's done. Um but like we had a good sense that people were excited about this because we had just like I wasn't gonna do a prop if if the voters weren't excited about it because it like the whole thing is made for voters, right? So we actually like double checked with a lot, a lot of people that this is something that they would be interested in before we even put it up because if if the prop if the voters weren't interested, then the the whole thing is dead in the water because that's that's the whole point. So because we we knew that voters were interested, we had a fairly high expectation of passing. Um, but uh, yeah, was, you can never count your chickens before they hatch. Whatever the expression is, don't want to count your eggs before they hatch. She's yep. I don't I'm bad with it. bad with sayings, not as folksy as I thought. <laughs> you say you checked with voters before you put it up. Yeah, I mean it's like it's just like it's just like honestly, there's like it's just internet stuff, right? It's just kind of like you like hit people up on like whatever channel they seem most active on. That's just, whether that's like Discord, you know, like DMs, like discourse, RIP. There was no real process to this outside of just trying to get in touch with people wherever they hang, hung out. It makes sense, but I think a lot of builders don't do that like it's obvious in hindsight but for a lot of people maybe they don't they don't have the confidence to hit people up or they don't know which channels to find them at would you give any advice to someone who's in that situation who's got sort of an idea they want to test it out but they're you know they're afraid or they don't know what to do i think my situation is a little different that i, I spend a little bit of time curating like i like cultivating relationships with a lot of people and sort of have a little bit of like a known online presence it's a little easier for me to hit up random people and for them to get back to me so i will say that like my experience has been a little different like if you're a new new presence in the community it's always a lot tougher i'm saying this from the perspective of somebody who has some relationships which is like yeah totally get feedback right it's kind of like this is a sort of just building software building companies building anything you just want to get people to tell you whether something is a bad idea as early as possible so that you don't spend 
a bunch of time working on something that probably is a bad idea. Best time to find out something sucks is when you before you start working on it. The, the earlier I can talk to people, the earlier they can tell me something is probably not very interesting, the better it is. I remember kind of when this happened, I was watching Agora and you went up, then you canceled, and then you got some feedback, and then you went back. And I think a lot of people don't get past this first stage where they, they go up, they it doesn't turn out how they want, and then they go away and don't come back. Can you talk a bit about about your experience here? This this is a lot of work putting up three different props, campaigning for them. Oh, yo, yeah, it's so much work. My goodness. Um, Will Price has this really f hilarious saying that I, I love, which is that like you only know that nouns is working when people are willing to work for below market rates for nouns because it's so cool, right? Like I, I think that's kind of like a, I, I, that's what it really felt like to me. Like I, the, throughout the process, I was like, yo, this makes not a lot of economic sense, but it just seems really cool. And it, like there's something here and I'm willing to like take a shot on this. So it was pretty painful, honestly, right? Just trying to like do go back and forth on these props. Um, and then like it was important to me that we sought like a really strong mandate from the voters because the voters were our users. I didn't want to do a version that was like 70, 30, where like 30% of people didn't like it. I, I, it was important for me to like get the prop to a place where it was like almost 100%. I didn't want to go upstream against my users, which were like the voters. It was important that we started on uh, off on the right foot, even though it meant be like uh, having a, a maybe a little bit more painful of an initial sort of like prop funding process. So you go up with 148 and then this gets canceled before voting starts. Is that because you got feedback on it? And what? Oh, the, the first time it's because I, I literally messed up the, uh, the, 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 the proposal submission. I just like got, was like never done this before. I got a little spooked um, and then misclicked the button. So they are. Uh, that was bad. That was just like <laughs> typos. 149 is there is the first one that like some people were like against because they were like, yo, this seems like a lot of you're asking for like a lot. We don't know you that well yet. Like, how about you come back with a smaller amount? And I was like, ouch, kind of painful. But you know what? That's fine. If if reducing the amount is sort of the only only issue here, then we're totally willing to do it. Like it's like, again, it's sort of the bull pricing, right? It's like this is interesting enough that like, yeah, we'll take a, a little bit of a hit on the amount and like sort of like, you know, like go through a more complicated process. But if that makes people more excited, then that's that's chill to me. 163, yeah. uh, zero, zero, no. So by this point, you've you've been propping for a while campaigning. Um, but then by the time you put this up, you're pretty confident that you're going to get a lot of votes. Well, I, I wasn't sure, actually. I remember I distinctly remember being this uh, doing this because I like um, we put the proposal up and, that, and then and then like my uh, my girlfriend and I went to Mexico City for, for a planned vacation. And then halfway through, I was like, wait, like this is not turning out the way that I expect. Like, like I took a couple of days off from the vacation, got back to work and then like talked to a bunch of people, honestly. I basically pinged everybody who voted against and was like, hey, why are you against? Let me see what I can do in the new version to make sure that you're for this and for you to be excited about this. Yeah, it was honestly just like a couple of days of just like calling everyone and be like, how do I make this work? How get a, do I get you excited about this? And then putting it up back again and making sure that the, the version that we, we put up was the one that really addressed people's feedback, right? Part of it was sort of around like the, the cost. Part of it was around like... They want people wanted more clarity about what we were gonna do, and it's this is the kind of stuff. Of like one lesson that I learned from this: it's hard for people to say what they really think before a prop goes on chain, which is sort of like a big realization for me. People don't really like uh, when the stakes are not high, when it's when you know when there isn't a prop that's about to sort of pass. You don't really look at things seriously. It's only when like the prop becomes on chain that you look at things seriously. Then you realize, hey, I don't like this. I don't like that. So it's almost like going on chain is the, really the only way that you can find out what people really think. And then they'll tell you that they don't like it. And then when, when they tell you on chain, it's much more real. And it, it kind of sucks that it, you, ha you have to find find out that they don't like it that late in the game, but it's really valuable feedback. And I, I wish there was a way to get this feedback without going through that whole process because it's painful. But Totally agree with what you just said. And there's there's so many negative externalities about this being true because so many people, I think, just have trouble taking no votes i mean yeah you described it i've i've had people vote against my props and it is really painful and i think a lot of people just get turned off or don't want to face that but when you look at it through another lens it's like being on chain is sort of the ultimate truth teller like you're gonna find out what people think about it when you go on chain I think not being afraid of that and being able to lean into that what really sets someone up to do well in nouns yep 
Yeah, you have to have, uh, you know, working in public and working with the public, you have to have pretty thick skin. Is it about you that you develop this kind of thick skin? Is it your experiences? It's, is it kind of who you've always been? I'm just, I'm just like a pretty dogged person. I don't know. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have particularly thick skin. Like it kind of like, you know, it's still painful to me. I just don't like giving up. Everything hurts. I'm kind of in the like uh, everything kind of everything worth doing kind of hurts. So, you know, like uh, it's just picking the kind of hurt that you want to, uh, that you want to accept, right? If you're going to do stuff in life, then it's going to hurt. So you just pick the, pick the kind of pain that is the most reasonable. Liquid delegation. I definitely want to get to that. Um... Let's do it. Yeah, so this is a feature you, uh, you've been banging on, I know, for probably a couple of weeks, a couple of months, maybe, maybe even longer, but you just kind of started releasing it uh, a couple of days ago. So what what is Liquid Delegation? Yeah, I, I've been, a Liquid Delegation is sort of like an umbrella of features that I've been really excited about for like a while. Early on, I thought this was going to be a bit pretty simple thing to implement. It turned out to be quite a beast. It's this idea that like, we have very simplistic delegation capabilities uh, in governance today. And it's like, for good reason, right? Like uh, oh, everybody forks compound governance, which was designed like, gosh, almost like four years ago now by like the compound team. And they, at that point, didn't really have a, an example of how delegation ought to work. And it, it's pretty clear to me that we're not going to be in a world of direct democracy where everybody with a token is going to always vote. That's just not possible. We've we've sort of like known this from the off-chain world and it's certainly proving more true on-chain. So like we must have the tools to elect representatives and for these representatives um, to, to have sort of like flexibility and power. And like, I just like there were all these things that like to me felt like obvious that we should be able to do that weren't possible. So we grouped all of that stuff and then... Uh, Called it liquid delegation. So some of this, uh, some of this involved redel. I, I think the two, a couple of m m most important things are a thing that we call split right delegation. So you can delegate different rights to different people. This is sort of in the very abstract sense a way to create specialities, you know, in delegates. Um, anything that can be defined on chain can be split out as a separate right. So in theory, right, you can have somebody who's like, you delegate to somebody who's only able to vote on proposals that upgrade the protocol. So somebody who's almost like a specialist of a protocol upgrades, you delegate to somebody who can also only vote on proposals that are less than 20 ETH. Uh, you delegate to somebody who can vote on proposals above 20 ETH. You delegate to somebody who can only vote on prop house. These are all possible. The most concrete example is uh, putting your, del your your rights on chain versus on prop house to create sort of like prop house specialist and on chain specialist. But you can go even far more granular than that. And I don't know that in nouns today we need to be th that granular, but the uh, the way that we've built liquid delegation is very generic and it can be redeployed on other DAOs like Optimism. Uh, like Uniswap, like uh, ENS. And in those places, you, you, you can think of other ways that they might want to split up these uh, these rights. So that's kind of one big bucket of things. The second big bucket of, uh, of a feature is sort of what we call redelegation. So today, if you delegate to me, I can't redelegate to anybody else. But using liquid delegation, what we can do is uh, you, you can delegate to me and I can delegate to somebody else. It seems very trivial, right? It's like a it's almost almost like a vacation responder where okay I'm gonna go on vacation now I'm gonna redelegate to I don't know like Will Price and he's gonna he's gonna vote for me while I'm on vacation uh, probably the reverse is more likely to happen in real life because I don't think Will Price really needs my delegation but you know what I mean right so you can redelegate um, if you want to like be out of office for for a little bit. But to me, the really interesting part of this is not redele like delegating and redelegating among people, but it's when contracts are involved. So yeah. for example, you can delegate to a contract and the contract can redelegate to somebody else. What happens now is that you can delegate to a process, right? So instead of saying, I like Panda, you can say, I like this process and I'm willing to trust my votes to this process. And this process can be anything we want, right? The contracts, contracts are very flexible. One example process could be the highest bidder. I like giving my vote to the highest bidder because I want to earn money. And I believe that, you know what? Whoever is most willing to pay is probably the person who is most will, able to uh, extract value or who cares the most, right? So it's you could you could it, it could be like a like a, like a, this is kind of what vote auction is. We had vote auction as like a manual process, but like with liquid delegation, now we can do like automatic vote auction. 
another process could be like a like a, a a democratic process where hey we like run these prop house rounds to find the delegates for these th this pot of votes and if i trust the, the the prop house round process then i just entrust my vote to whoever wins this round sort of like uh what we've been doing with delegate race so while before we had liquid delegation we were trying to sort of like um trying out a bunch of these different processes manually and now that we have the tools to do them automatically, I'm really excited to sort of start this. I start this thing where we we can start uh, delegating not to individuals but to a process, and then the process picks individuals, which I think is sort of like a very different and potentially more more permanently sustainable way of doing delegation. That's I hadn't thought about it like that. Jeez, really makes me think uh, we're just so early in governance innovation there's so so much possibly out let's say i don't know to take a dumb example but say i'm really opposed to rage quit i could theoretically delegate my vote out for all matters except for rage quit where i could retain the right or or i could delegate it to an auto no on rage quit contract couldn't i yeah you, you totally could you could do like a that well it's a little hard to tell what is a rage quit thing but like you you could like like um i think if you wanted to do that you would retain the right to vote on protocol upgrades and then like because th there's no way for us to tell what kind of code payload is uh is uh is rage quit and what kind isn't so you would just retain the right for all code payloads and then uh you can delegate the right for anything else like uh away that makes sense um it also makes sense that it's going to give us a lot more efficiency with governance. Um, so like, for example, let's say, let's say there's a proposal that's figuring out how, how to get votes and I could delegate my vote to that contract that, that will meet, be a yes vote. Then basically you could keep on tweaking your prop or ask until you get enough people who delegate to that proposal. Right. Yep. Exactly. So let me let me give an example here. So Prop House has limited funding. I can't remember when they run out, but I think they're funded, I don't know, for the next couple of months and maybe CDT has more funding. Um, so eventually, I, I mean, I think pretty soon there's probably going to be a Prop House prop up. And like, let's say I'm just, uh, well, in fact, um, this will be a good transition because I'm, I'm working on a delegate statement and I am a Prop House maxi. Um, so let's say I could delegate in a way that signals that, hey, I'm going to vote for any prop house proposal that gives the prop house team, you know, up to, I don't know, 500 ETH or 100 ETH or any kind of arbitrary limit. Um, as soon as that contract gets enough delegations, then the prop could go on chain and um, you kind of be reasonably con more confident of, of the votes following, um, the intention there. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's interesting. This is, I, I just have a feeling that, uh, <laughs> programmable, programmable governance is, uh, just going to be a very, very deep, deep, rich topic. And it's, it's interesting just how early I, I perceive us, but I don't know. Do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. It's like, um, I think of it as like this is kind of a, a little wonky, honestly, right? It's like um, I don't think most people are like this deep in sort of like thinking about programmability, governance, and de delegation. But I think that's exactly what we're where we're headed. And zooming out a little bit, like we must make protocol governance a lot better. Otherwise, it's it's just the stage that it, it is at today is kind of terrible. Like uh, to to be pretty frank, it works kind of poorly. If we're gonna create all these protocols that are gonna be natural monopolies, we must be able to govern our our natural monopolies better than we have governed our private enterprises because otherwise we're we're back to square one. And so to me, it's very important socially that we figure this out because. The whole point of, of crypto is that we can have these credibly neutral natural monopolies that benefit the commons as opposed to, you know, like allow for private capture. Um, and not to say that private capture is necessarily wrong. The commons and the private capture can be imbalanced. To me, I think sort of having a lot more tools around the way that these things are governed and sort of provides us with the, uh, the ease of use, the flexibility, the power to like do this stuff is super important uh, for us as a space to figure out. Agora does govern is providing governance for OP and ENS, right? Yep. Um, can you talk about what you've learned from either of those communities? Oh boy, where do I even start? Um, 
which one do you want to go first, ENS or or or, uh, or optimism? You know, I I have not thought about this at all, so I'm really interested in what you say um, to either. Let's, why don't we start with OP? Okay, actually, maybe maybe maybe, uh, maybe we can just do them together. Now that I think about it, I think Bounce does a lot of things really well, like the slow start, sort of the NFT governance, like a, a lot of things in Nouns are just like incredible. And sometimes I think people like us who are super deep in Nouns like forget is that actually there are a lot of different places that do a lot of different things well. Like nobody has figured it out. The whole package but like optimism for example has a dual bicameral structure between citizen house and and, uh, and token house that i think is a really interesting checks and balances system not yet proven out how effective it is but i like the idea and i think it's like uh, I, I think if this kind of checks and balance works i think it's going to be really powerful the difference between also optimism and ens is that they both have foundations that are very active and uh, try to act as almost like a, a facilitator for governance as opposed to nouns where the foundation is exclu exclusively a legal entity and not really involved in day to day. So that, that creates sort of like a pretty different dynamic. I don't think either way is better or worse, but they're just two very different approaches to decentralized governance. Both have their merits and both have their drawbacks, uh, but th that's also very different. I think one thing that Optimism has done phenomenally well is they have sort of this multi airdrop kind of scheme where they didn't just dump all of their tokens on their users when, like at once because you like... Um, then it means you only have one one bullet in the chamber that you fire, and if you fire it wrong, then you can you can't undo that, right? Instead, they have they have tranched multiple like uh their their airdrop in multiple waves. It's almost a little bit of, it, it it leaves the airdrop farmers and everybody guessing at how they're going to do the airdrop, and how are they going to guess? Well, they're going to read what the Optimism Foundation cares about. And then they're going to try to do the things that the Optimism Foundation cares about in order to anticipate the airdrop. They're doing it really right, right, for the airdrop where they're like, ah, we're not going to tell you what, what the criteria is going to be. But we talk a lot about what we care about. And we try to airdrop to people to do things we care about. And then we're going to do it multiple times. So they have a very incentivized, like, community where we've seen some really crazy numbers on optimism i think we just crossed like a hundred thousand votes on optimism so far over like three votes that's insane that's like it's like thirty thousand votes per prop like nouns has like 40 uh, votes i mean different scale of course and a lot of those people are airdrop farmers but even even if they're airdrop farmers it's just like thirty thousand votes per prop it's just still still quite insane in my opinion so Lots of things to learn, uh, they're, they're like uh, at uh, from 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 uh, the way that other people do this. And honestly, I think optimism has a lot to learn from nouns as well. I think that the slow start thing is is actually a um, a, a really really cool thing. Where on honestly, like what optimism is doing with this sort of like multi wave airdrop is to some extent a slow start, right? Like uh, they haven't airdrop all their tokens at once. They're like onboarding a, a few people at a time. A few in optimism means a lot more than for most people. But like they're like onboarding waves at a time, letting people figure. Things Things out so i think that's actually a really cool thing that they've like sort of like uh, done too I, I don't know where i'm going with the rest of this but that's uh, just a lot of cool things that we've discovered that other people are doing here and there that i wish that people were just learning a little bit more from each other take all the good stuff put it into a single package and uh, letting anybody who does governance in the future use all the best practices from all the best places you know it'll be interesting are the products are the agora products different at all other than branding or is it the same product with different branding because I imagine the needs are maybe different. And over time, I wonder how much your, your product will differentiate itself between Nouns Agora and OP Agora. Well, honestly, I don't, the, I, I'm hoping that we never do, honestly. Like fundamentally, the, 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 the contracts are quite the same. And it's like, ideally, if Optimism figures out something that's really cool, I'd love to bring it to Nouns. And if Nouns figures out something really cool, I'd love to bring it to Optimism. Like fundamentally, we're all trying to do the same thing um, in like, Obviously, the subject matter is very different, but like l the underlying contract is like ninety five percent similar, like uh, for everyone. So it's like it the the product experience should be also ninety five percent similar. And if it's not ninety five, then I I think we something's gone wrong. And um, our goal is to sort of take the best parts and 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 uh, proliferate it everywhere. That's gonna be really fun to watch uh, how Agora develops. Love to see Agora being used out uh, across crypto. Um, definitely, I'm going to be watching it closely. Let's, uh, we've got just 10 minutes left. Um, so real quickly, I uh, wanted some help uh, writing a, pro a delegate statement. And I was kind of thinking about this in terms of, hey, if I'm, like I had Onion on uh, the stream last night, um, and he just kind of went up and made this, and then someone delegated to him. 
but I think uh, a lot of people, this, this might be a little bit intimidating. And so I was wanted to kind of break down kind of how you would write a delegate statement and just do one real quick in 10 minutes. That's yeah, it. let's do it. And then, you know what would be fun afterwards? You, sh you should post it in the, uh, in the now 40 looking for a friend race. If you care, like, uh, it sounds like you care a lot about prop house and it, it could be a really good place to, uh, to uh, use this per this statement for something so that uh, you can get some votes on Prof House. Awesome. Okay. So I've got kind of a persona I've been working on. It's kind of humorous, but it's basically uh, Carnegie Nounsworth. And so nice. this is a, a mashup of Andrew Carnegie, uh, known, known mainly for, as a robber baron, but um, actually was a leader in philanthropy, gave away a ton of money. Um, and then, uh, it's also a mashup of Dale Carnegie, not related, uh, yeah. but the author of how to win friends and influence people. And then had to pick a noun head. So I went with the Carnegie deli and this is a sandwich head. Um, so here's my, here's my delegate. It's Carnegie nouns worth got the ETH accessory, um, basic ideas, you know, friendliness, you know, and helpfulness and kind of all the good, how to win friends and influence people. Uh, and then from the Carnegie thing, you know, it's about uh, public goods, uh, giving away money kind of thoughtfully and carefully, but also supporting kind of a wide range of, of interests across arts and culture and kind of all this emerging culture, I think, is one of the big, uh, big sources of value I see for nouns. Um, so how do I uh, how can I write this up in a way that kind of communicates that pretty well? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a big fan of people being pretty honest and writing sort of what they think. I like it when they like, I, I, I mean, to me, the most interesting set statements are the ones where people say things that like they believe in and also say like, a, and, and sort of like, a, I, I, I think that the, 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 the most, most interesting uh, parts is sort of like, a, where do you disagree with maybe some, some people on some things? For example, I, I think one is always very interesting is like, what are props that you would have, you would have voted no on? that people like that passed and what are props that you would have voted yes on that failed right those are kind of like very interesting it's like where do i where do i defer where do where am i different as a voter from like the the, the medium the median person so that i think is always really interesting and then what are my views on like i think the, the most important thing is maybe what are, what are my views on like what the heck nouns is for like i think there's like ever like nouns is not has some rules that are enshrined in the contract but what is the whole point of this thing there's a strong disagreement on like what is the whole point of nouns i think there are multiple different views on on what what we're here to do i think it's a, it's helpful to say what you believe nouns is for so that people can figure out like whether they agree for the same uh, agree on this to my knowledge two different camps on this maybe even more probably even more that i'm not even aware of so um, that that's also really helpful Okay, views on top issues. Let's see, on proliferation. There's a, there's a couple of choices here, by the way. These are not the only ones, but uh, yeah. Yeah, what are... Um, if you click through it, I believe it's proliferation, treasury management. I just added some, like, I forgot what, what the other ones are. I got to pull it up. You know, I had Chris Carella on a couple of weeks ago, and he was frustrated. He wanted more more options here yeah you know what like uh, he's i i want to ping him to see what, what other options oh yeah and then builder funding i i, I want to ping him to see more more ideas we we put these three categories in way back in the day um but uh yeah there's definitely more <laughs> topics we should have put at least at the very least at other yeah i mean or you could have something about like the general conversation about rage quit um, you could have something about, I don't know, what's controversial proposals. Maybe they're not super controversial. <sighs> Quorum. Uh, honestly, like, I think that, uh, I think what's controversial is, uh, like the, the, a nav, I think is pretty controversial. Yeah. And asset value, like uh, how many, like uh, if you divide the treasury by the number of nouns, what's the number? Like that's. Like, does it matter? Does it not matter? Does it matter not? Like, uh, how much does it matter? We'll see. Right, like, you know, that would be interesting of... as a slider. Like, if I could select uh, three different options. Yeah. Important, not important, somewhat important. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? So most valuable, least valuable. I wonder, is there a taxonomy of proposals? Um, like... 
you know, proposals to fund movies, right? That would be like one versus proposals to fund software. Is there any, any kind of organized taxonomy of the, these different types? Um, no, not on chain, unfortunately. Uh, I wish there was though, because then we can start sort of like doing a lot of some classification, but uh, no, it doesn't exist, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. And then you did clarify to me, I can uh, add my own images. I just have to host it myself. Yeah. You can just add like a, you can upload them to Im Imager and then uh, just yeah, link them back. Cool. All right. So when I get this up then, would this make me eligible to get um, this prop house delegation? Yeah, yeah, uh, and then uh, yeah, you would link it to the prop house, and then like um, I think I, I think uh, if you, if you link this pro profile to prop house, that'd be very helpful. And I think on the on your submission to the prop house, you can even go and add a further like little blurb about why specifically like uh, you know you would be a good fit for uh, for prop house, and then maybe how you align with now 40s views. I think now 40 has been pretty popular, like uh, sorry, pretty pretty prolific on Twitter talking about his views on on uh, on how this works. And since he's the he's the person who's going to be selecting the um, the winner, I think it'd be helpful if you if, if you're uh, if you want to win to be like, yo, this is why I would be really aligned with your views, and this is how I view Prop House and what we should be doing. Yep. Yeah, because a Prop House delegate might even have a different kind of taxonomy about what they look for in funding props. Yeah, right. It's like I don't I, I, I frankly am one of those people who like don't look as often as I should on Prop House. And I, I don't really know, honestly, like uh, like uh, I suspect the the I suspect the the funding game for on Prop House is like slightly different than the funding game on chain. And, uh, you know, if you can speak specifically to sort of like how you view Prop House, I think that's a big plus. Right. Because it means that you have thought about Prop House more than the average person. Yeah. That's a good goal. That's, you know, it's almost like a, an easier, lighter way to get involved in noun governance is nouns voters, I think, are going to be a lot more likely to delegate out their prop house votes, particularly if, if they don't lead, uh, use them because the stakes are much smaller. Um, so we could have a whole new, you, you know, you could usher in a whole new era of uh, prop house delegates who start, you know, get their start in the low kind of the minor leagues doing prop house work. Yep, that's right. That's exactly the thought. Amazing. Um, awesome. So this is uh, everyone watching. You have 12 days to get your prop in uh, nounsagora.com. Uh, anyone with an EN, anyone with an Ethereum wallet can use this, right? You don't have to dox or anything. You just need an nope. ETH wallet. Just need an ETH address. And um, then you do have to submit here your prop house. Even if you set up an Agora delegate, you do need to submit. Although, it'd be, yeah, it'd be cool to combine that into one, but make sure you submit. Uh, you have 12 days. Now in four, you'll pick the winner. That's a big payload of votes too, by the way. He's got over 20 votes, 22 nouns. Oh yeah, 22. Like, like, like I, I, I was actually, we were actually kind of a little spooked even doing this because uh, think about it, 22 nouns, that's like 220 prop house votes. And that's often enough to basically swing any, any prop house vote. And in fact, multiple. Yeah. Because uh, you can split your votes. That's right. Amazing. All right, Yatong, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to get my proposal up soon. I uh, really appreciate uh, really appreciate you coming on and sharing all this. Yeah, no, I appreciate you uh, willing to do this. It'll be fun. Awesome. Uh, cool. we'll, uh, we'll see you around. Thanks. Yeah, see ya. Nouns.